Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Software Architecture in London. I'm here with Jorge from Red Hat. Jorge, how you doing? Fine. How are you doing? Good. So you've you've had a couple roles in Red Hat. What what are you? Where did you start? And where are you now? So I used to be um, a software architect, a developer, um, an architect going to help customers ado adopt our technology and understand our technology. Uh, some time back, and I moved to the OpenShift Business Unit, and I now feel product manager. So I now also go and see customers, but I understand. I try to understand how they use our technology to make it better, eventually better and better to fit there. So yes. what are what are some of the patterns you see in in your customers wanting to architect different solutions and different patterns? So what? usually OpenShift is. Right now, it's being widely adopted in the enterprise, in the big enterprise. And one of the things that we are seeing is that uh, most of them, if they are not greenfield, they are they have legacy applications, monolith applications that they want to transition to make the, the development process more agile, more more fast to develop uh, to market uh, time to market their applications. So they are moving that um, monolith into into the microservice. The thing is that moving a monolith to a microservice architecture is not easy. So sometimes it's, it's a the long process where you start understanding how you can decompose your application into multiple pieces. So you can probably start extracting pieces or components by components and making them um, microservices. So the good thing about that is that OpenShift is a good platform to enable that because at the end uh, it will manage the same way what is a monolith and what is a, a microservice. Of course, the enterprise don't have the ability to have the same scalability or the same uh, HA capacity with a monolith than with a microservice. So what they want to do is treat the same um, application with the same um, um, operational concerns. So having one single platform to operate whatever service they have and the life cycle of those applications is really cool. So we are seeing also a big shift into a microservices world. So, and if we talk about Greenfield, all this new technology that is coming out, uh, Lambda's technologies and, mm -hmm. and this, uh, all these uh, open um, Netflix OSS technologies or Spring Boot technologies, it's been very, very adopted. So when, when you see these companies uh, doing their big shift with OpenShift, mm -hmm. um, how do you see the, the success patterns there? Is it the ones that are able to decompose services into their own microservice and then spin it up and keep it healthy and running and yeah. everything. Is that a success pattern or are there other things that yeah. people are doing? Yeah, so doing? that's a success pattern and also, um, it's to be honest, it's really difficult to decompose a big application into, into multiple uh, services. So as the more um, help that you get from the platform to allow you to do that process, uh, the easier it gets. So usually there is no multiple ways to move one single application. So there is all one option, which is rewrite the whole application in one shot mm. or do it in it slowly. The problem with moving one big legacy application in one shot is that it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And sometimes you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, go through that path. So you, you start taking out things and making them reusable as much as possible. So that's the most common way of decomposing a microservice. So uh, legacy. in that decomposition, do people then, when they decompose the service, the microservice, do they then rewrite it? Is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, usually, so usually yes. They, they yeah. try to adopt more lightweight technologies as they rewrite. It's uh, usually, w when we talk about monolith applications, it's not because of the technology they use, but it's usually how they assemble all these pieces together. So it's it probably can be the same technology, but it's really um, tight and bound together. So it's just a matter of the first step usually is just to take these pieces out in the same technology. But as they move forward, they usually want to adopt more lightweight technology where it's easier to develop and it's uh, easier to create, uh, to create new or to use new functions. So, you know, that, that monolith to microservices is one sort of journey that large enterprises take. Another one that we keep hearing, I'm sure you do as well, and I'm not sure how it ties directly to architecture, but most companies want to be more agile. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a role for good architecture with an agile world? Is, is that helping contribute to so it? So usually that's why microservices became so famous or so popular in, in the industry. It's because they are small pieces that you can compose. Manageable. Ma 
they are yeah. small and manageable pieces that you can compose and combine in different ways. So when you have a monolith, if you need to transform, if you need to make changes, there is a lot of things that you need to change uh, whenever you um, are trying to release a new or bring out a new release. So the problem is that this, this process of testing the whole monolith it's really complex and it takes a lot of effort and time. While if you, what you need to have uh, you tested, it's a smaller piece, it's really, it's faster and it requires less time and it's also easier. So the thing is that you can have different life cycle for your monolith. So you can, you can start evolving your, your, what it used to be your monolith in different, in different ways. So before you had to have a release where you release everything and now you can release, be, be releasing half a small releases of different components and different times. So the could a case could a case be made though that that there if you have more smaller pieces around the enterprise, the the microservices that communication and um, coordination and all of, and orchestration ar around those have to happen much better than they used to on one monolithic team is that yeah of course of course at the end if you if you talk about splitting what used to be run on the same runtime let's talk about java i'm i'm a java architect mm -hmm. so usually as a java architect you deploy a compose or, or monolith into a one application server they talk to uh, components they talk between each other through the memory direct memory access so that's really fast if you decompose probably you need to talk through the network so that means that uh, there is a lack time for this uh, communication but that's a trade-off you want to go also right now communications are really fast so it's not really a big issue as long as you um, use the appropriate uh, communication channels or protocols you can you can get almost the same uh, performance excellent so if, if you look forward in in software architecture what do you think are going to be the big themes coming in the next year or so? I mean, right now, obviously, we do hear this monolith to microservices. We hear companies wanting to be lean and agile. We, there, there's this whole digital transformation that's underway with most large enterprises. What do you think are going to be the patterns and the architectures that kind of derive out of that journey as companies go from the mid-90s architecture that they likely have to a modern organization today? So probably, I'm not, I'm not really sure about the answer, otherwise I would probably have a, made a, a startup <laughs> around that and, <laughs> and, and get rich. Exactly. And get rich. But um, what I think probably is that we will see the, the evolution in the technology that we use. So um, protocols will become faster because at the end we are going into more distributed model. Mm -hmm. So there will be a lot of work around protocols, al around um, um, these uh, patterns that are um, done in the microservices industry, like um, um, failover or cir uh, circuit breaker, this kind of stuff that will allow you to create applications in a more reliable way whenever it's distributed, because those patterns are easy to implement when, when everything is deployed into the same, uh, to the same server. An architectural when, pattern, you know, yeah. When you yeah, when you decompose that and you make it distributed, it's really difficult to manage that. So, so there will be a lot of uh, investment into creating these patterns and, and, and using new technology for this. Excellent, excellent. So if, if you and I sit down, um, let's say next year here in London, what would you like to say is going to change for you in your role with Red Hat and what you're doing with your partners and also in the industry in around architecture? So. One of the things that uh, I see we are somehow limited is in the amount of, um, of um, runtimes and technology that we support. And I would will, I will love to, s to see that OpenShift is really adopted in many more technologies. So anything that could be done um, in the new um, developments that will come out, I would love them to be implementing in OpenShift. So right now I look into enterprise and they ask us, do you support these technologies? And even though it, they can't do it themselves, we don't support them by by ourselves. So we don't we don't provide a supported way of uh, of uh, use um, Netflix OSS, for example. So I will I will be happy that all of that technology should be could be supported in OpenShift. Excellent, Jorge. We look forward to yeah. that conversation. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you.